What's up, Get Fit fam? Welcome back to Authentic Alphas. Tonight we're going to do an authentic movie review. So the film that we're going to talk about tonight is the latest Predator film. So I told you guys that I was going to experiment with some movie reviews. It's something I'm interested in. Like I said, I love movies. And this particular movie, I was actually a little skeptical when they announced that they were going to be producing this movie. I was like, eh. And um, then it came out that Disney was actually who was producing that movie. And then I was like, what, Disney's producing a Predators movie? Is this even going to be rated R? What's, what's going on with this? Uh, then they announced that it was going straight to Hulu. And I think that was probably like right after they announced that it was going to have a female lead. So needless to say, there was a lot of shaky things um, said about this particular movie that was coming out. There was nothing really motivating other than they're doing another Predators movie, which for most people actually wasn't very interesting at all, as a lot of fans have given up on the Predators franchise. So I'm not sure where you guys stand on it. You're going to have to really jump in the comments on, on this one and let me know, because I have no idea um, where my following stands as far as the Predator franchise it was a movie that was originally released in the 80s. The first one came out with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, if you haven't seen the first Predators, like, what, what is you doing, man? I mean, that's something that, like, every guy should have seen. But it came out in 1987, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it was a very tightly contained movie. It was filmed all in the jungle. I don't know what country, Bolivia, whatever, somewhere in the jungle, you know, in, in some type of uh, tropical rainforest. But it was just that one simple set. That's it. The entire movie takes place in the jungle. Uh, the premise is an alien from a hunter race comes to Earth to hunt whatever would be the apex predator on our particular planet. So the lore um, has been you know, expanded through other films as well as comic books, but mostly in comic books and, and movie, uh, sorry, comic books and books. Uh, has the story been as expounded upon and unfortunately the movies have never really gone into the depth that the comics and the books have gone into but the original was still a classic with you knowing very little about the alien so hopefully that gets you interested in it if you haven't seen it but I would re repeat and stress that the original um, Predator movie is a classic okay so it's one of the movies that, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger really, really um, got his his uh, name and reputation off of, you know, uh, Terminator, um, Commando, Predator. But probably his two most famous movies from that era would be Terminator and Predator, okay? So since then, they've released several films that were either Predator films or featured the Predators um, at some point in time. A comic book company acquired the rights to it, who also had the rights to Aliens. So you have some interaction and a shared universe between the Aliens continuity as well as the Predators continuity. So a couple of things I want to talk about um, without giving you any spoilers, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the, the, you know, the overall scene of the film, you know, when and where it takes place, as well as... Um, you know what the what the simplest premises of the movie and it is a, a very simple movie uh, and also we'll just go through the other films that came out in the predator franchise why i think that this is a, actually a, a good thing moving forward a lot of people thought the franchise was dead and it wasn't even worth reviving so as i said I was very skeptical when I heard that they were coming out with another Predator movie. I wasn't excited at, at all. The last one that they did was 2018, and it was trash. It, like, barely, it barely was worth going to see. And if you're a fan of the Predator, it's really disappointing to see them continuously make movies that just, like, drop the ball. Okay? So this particular movie went straight to streaming, and that was kind of disappointing. But like I said, there's really not a lot of enthusiasm and faith in the franchise that would motivate people to get up and go to the theaters, especially with where the economy is at now. So it's probably smart that they actually went straight to streaming. So if you have Hulu, definitely check it out, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you why. 
All right, so what's different about this particular Predator movie? Well, what's different as well as the same about this Predator movie is that they decided to go back to the basics and basically emulate what made the first film successful and so loved and well received and that was the simplicity of it you have some humans doing whatever they're doing living their life um, and then you have this alien coming from somewhere else that they don't know anything about the alien also knows very little about the humans they interact people die <laughs> Um, and it comes down to one human having to defeat this extraterrestrial that has several physical advantages on said human. Therefore, the human has to be very, very cunning, very, very smart and intelligent and use what it has learned about this particular creature in order to not only survive, but defeat this creature. So they're basically in the same situation and it's just um, a war of um, a war of, of, of the species, of these particular individuals. They're in, the same, they're in the same spot. They're both in an environment and they have very little at their disposal and they have just their wits to, um, to compete with to see who comes out on top, okay? So that's pretty much what worked for the first Predator and that's what they went ahead and did with this one. All right, so real quick, things to know. The setting of the movie takes place in the 1700s in North America which also is something unique about the film as it is a prequel all right so this is the first time in the predator franchise that they actually went back instead of going forward all the other predator movies they either go forward or the time frame is of no relevance although i will say that there are some flashbacks in the alien vs predator movies all right but they're definitely not prequels Okay, so another thing to know about this film, like I said, it had a female lead. Now, of course, to many guys, this was a turnoff. Most you know, fans of, of the franchise are those type of guys that don't necessarily want to see a female pushed into that position um, just to serve some type of political you know, agenda, right? So we, we are a little irritated with that ideology being forced into our films because it tends to ruin the movies um, and those movies tend to have poor writing. This is not a concern, okay? And that was good news to pretty much everybody that is a fan of the Predator franchise. It having a female lead, in my opinion, doesn't in any way ruin um, the experience. She's not like this light, frail chick that somehow is overpowering men. Definitely not. She is a weak, frail female. And all her wins come from um, her having to be very smart, very clever, and very cunning. And I don't think anything in this movie is like unbelievable or like, oh, there's no way that you know she would have did that or that could have happened or could have been done that way. Everything is very practical. Now, as far as the, um, the, the stunts and like... Uh, the special effects, they don't overdo it on the CGI. The CGI is relatively minimal, so that's awesome. And um, there's a couple of things, or five things, that I want to rate this movie on that we're going to get to real soon. And that's the story, the acting, the design, the sound, and the continuity. All right, so we're going to get to that. But first, I just want to briefly go through a summary of the previous movies, just so you guys know how many of them there are. And if you are interested in seeing them, um, the first one, like I said, was The Predator, released in 1987. The second one was The Predator 2. That one was, stand, uh, was starring Danny Glover, and that one came out in 1990. The third one was Alien vs. Predators. That came out in 2004. And then the fourth one was Alien vs. Predator Reliquum, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. That was 2007. And uh, then they came out with another one called The Predators, which was 2010. And then they came out with The Predator, which was the last one, which was 2018. All right. So where some of these movies failed. The first one, classic. I don't think anybody really has any complaints about that. The second one, they decided to bring the Predator to New York City, and a lot of people felt like that was a miss, and pretty much why that one wasn't as good as the first. Now, the third one 
wasn't necessarily a Predators movie. It was basically just a cash grab. I mean, I can imagine the studio saying, hey, Predators is popular. Aliens is popular. We own both. Let's make a movie. So it's kind of like the Godzilla versus King Kong. That's basically what they did. They just said, hey, let's make an alien fight a Predator and we should make a lot of money. And that movie kind of sucked. All right. It was a free-for-all with the special effects. It was, you know, somewhat cool to see these two aliens fight, but the movie suffered as far as writing is concerned um, and story, right? That's where the suffrage was on that one. And then the second one they did with that same, you know, basic core premise, Aliens versus Predator again, had all the same things wrong with it. Story sucked, writing sucked, but it was pretty cool to see the aliens fight, okay? Then they came out with Predators, which was actually pretty cool. It was actually pretty cool, and the acting was pretty sound, and the premise was that the aliens, being um, a species that prides itself on hunting the apex predator of all the different planets that they visit and conquering said apex predator, proving that they are the most dominant hunter and predator, I guess, in the galaxy, um, what they did was they took these apex predators or whatever the dominant life form was on all of these planets and decided to just put them on a random planet and let them duke it out. So it was actually pretty cool, although I would have preferred to just simply see a movie taking place on the home planet of the aliens. You know, that would have been cool. Um, and then they went ahead and did The Predator, uh, which was another predator coming to Earth in recent, like in modern times, you know, with our Facebook, our Instagram, our modern technology, and then some type of hybrid um, alien. If I remember correctly, I think humans had something to do with trying to manipulate the DNA of the predator, something like that. And then this bigger, enhanced predator fights, you know, a regular predator, and wasn't anything to call home about, guys. It pretty much sucked, all right? It was a waste of an opportunity to have another good predator movie, which is why so many people were disappointed. And that brings us to today, the release of Prey on Hulu. Um, as you can see, this is the first movie that doesn't have Predator in the title, which I'm sure was, you know, intentional. They were trying to somewhat, um, you know, separ separate it from the um, failure of the past movies. There are some very unique visual aspects to this movie. The alien um, himself is different than the aliens we've seen previously. He's from the same planet. But from what I understand, in the Predator lore, he's from a more tribal um, you know, region of their planet, which is why his weaponry is different, his style of fighting is different, his appearance is different. He's the same species, but I guess what you would say a different race, like how we have people from different parts of the world. They don't necessarily look the same. We're all humans but we all distinctly look different. So this alien distinctly looks different from all the aliens that we've seen in the past. He doesn't even have that, that, that signature armor that we always see. So we see a lot more of the alien um, the entire movie, which is awesome. All right, so let's just talk uh, a little bit about the main character. She is a coming in of, of age female, and she's dealing with um, refusing the gender norms in her culture, right? So she doesn't want to be uh, a cook, she doesn't want to be a gatherer, and she doesn't want to be a medicine lady, although she does have natural talent for healing and creating uh, medicines. Instead, she wants to be a hunter and a warrior, just like her brother and her father before her, okay? So that's the little um, gender dynamic that they have going on, going against gender norms, and it's more so a coming of age movie, I think, than it is that. She just happens to be a female. All right, so like I said, it takes place in the 1700s um, with some Comanche, a Comanche tribe, but there is some interaction with the Europeans, although they're not English Europeans, which I'm sure most people were expecting. They're actually French. Okay, so now let me just go ahead and rate those five things, guys, before I get out of here. So the story, I got to give it a 10, right? And I'm trying not to be generous here. I'm trying not to be, you know, biased. But the story was very simple. Therefore, <laughs> they didn't screw it up. You get what I'm saying? The story is on point, all right? Not complex, not hard to understand. And the movie is paced very well. So I give the story a 10. Uh, the next thing is the acting. 
Now, I'm going to give the acting the six. And the reason why I'm going to give the acting a six is going to be one of my few complaints about the movie. And that's because not so much that they didn't speak in a, a native language. That's what a lot of people are irritated about. But I don't think that that's what they're irritated about. I think that's just how they frame it or describe it. It's not so much that they didn't speak Comanche. It's the fact that they speak in a very now, you know, contemporary dialogue. I mean, the way that they're interacting with each other, any minute now you're thinking somebody's going to ask for somebody's Instagram because they talk so much like it's today. They literally, the conversation, if you closed your eyes, you would think it's a couple of Mexicans from Texas or El Paso or California having a conversation. It does, definitely does not sound like the, the way that people would have spoke in the 1700s. And again, I'm not talking about the actual language. I'm talking about the way they talk, the way they interact with each other. It's way too modern and way too contemporary. So that, I think, really took a lot from the movie. Whereas what we would have liked to have seen is it be exactly like Apocalypto, all right? So if you haven't seen Apocalypto, watch that. That was a, a, a Mel Gibson movie. He directed it and it was about what the Aztecs and the Mayans and it was Excellent. You know, it was extremely well done, and um, it was very, very authentic. Okay. So the next area is the design. Now I was just um, praising the design of the Predator. I think it was, in my opinion, the best Predator design that they've ever had. Which I think is ironic because it's the smallest budget that they've ever worked with since the first film. All right. But that design is perfect. It was flawless, in my opinion. Right? The Predator was flawless. Majority of the natives, if not all of them, with the exception of the main character, their wardrobe, um, you know, costume design, pretty on point. The French, 100% on point. Keep in mind, this movie has very few characters in it. It has a very small population. It's, very, it's a very contained story. You have only the uh, Comanche tribe. You have only the French um, poachers. And you have the one Predator. That's it. This movie has like 20 people in it in total. Um, so everybody's costume was on point except for the main uh, character. Okay, her name is Naru. And her, I don't know who the, I swear to God, she looks like she got her Indian costume from fucking Party City. All right, she looks like she's about to go trick-or-treating. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just being honest, guys. That was the part that I was like, yo, they could have improved that. So I'm going to go ahead and reference Apocalypto again. Apocalypto, the costume design was perfect perfected you really thought you were there um next is the sound the sound sorry got to give it another 10 the sound in this movie is perfect the sound of the animals the sound of nature the sound of the predator perfect okay and um the last thing is the continuity and i want to give the continuity a nine Okay, a nine. I, I, I want to give it a ten, but I don't want to give too many tens. I'll give it a hard nine. The continuity of the film is amazing. It flows very, very well um, with the first two, with all of them in general, because it doesn't conflict with any of the Predator movies, which is something um, that I appreciate, because there's so much in this movie that's a callback to the original that really makes you feel like this is an actual species. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of character um, that they were able to replicate uh, in, in presenting these predators to us again. So appreciated that. Um, so yeah, man, I think that's about all I want to say about it. I don't want to say too much. I want you guys to go and see it. I was excited um, to see it once I started seeing some of the reviews coming in like a week ago. Some people saw it early and I said, okay, whew. Um, we thought we were going to have another trashy uh, predators movie. But I'm excited because this means that they are going to go ahead and not necessarily reboot the franchise, but they're going to go ahead and start making not only Predator movies again, but they're actually going to be quality now. Because this proves that they don't have to just throw a bunch of money at it and do a whole bunch of special effects nonsense and try to do all this over-the-top Transformers shit, because um, that's what ruined the Transformers franchise. And if you guys are familiar with the Transformers, they came back with Bumblebee, and Bumblebee was fucking awesome. But Bumblebee was a smaller scale movie. It had less characters. The story was a lot simpler. It had a lot less moving parts. And guess what? 
It was an awesome ass film. It focused on just one Transformer instead of a whole bunch of them. And there was very little um, action in comparison to the other Transformers. And there was a lot less stuff blowing up and, you know, all, all these, you know, extra, extra um, side stories and, and, and side things going on. So I think the message here is that sometimes less is more. All right, guys. Uh, the movie also does end with a lot of optimism for a sequel. The way it ends, yeah, they could go right into a sequel, like immediately. They can go into film in a sequel. The story pretty much writes itself the way that this one ended. All right, so uh, please get into the uh, comments. Uh, if you like this movie review, go ahead and hit the like button for me, man, because... This shit, I am definitely off the algorithm right now, guys. So I guess this is why YouTubers be sounding like they're begging because that, that algorithm is very unforgiving. All right, so like the uh, video for me. Definitely get in the comments and tell me how you feel about movie reviews in general. Let me know what was the best movie you saw this year so far. Also, let me know what you thought about Predators if you saw it. If you haven't, let me know if you plan on seeing it. Um, and other than that, I'm pretty much up out of here, guys. All right, let's keep it authentic. Peace.